flags in this draft and players who have been picked that do sometimes tend to put kills before actual you know flag pickups and returns and things like that that could easily be a problem for those teams yeah, and we've seen, I mean, yeah, you and I both facial have seen, even in recent pugs where we've been on the same team. I mean, I've, I've personally been on defense on a map like Vault City or something. I'll go I'll go like negative 25, but our team will win 5-3. to three, And that's just showing you a team that's going to play capture the flag and not going to play let's go out and get kills. So yeah. that's a, another huge dynamic that I think we will see in this uh, MLF. I actually have casted a couple of those, you know, games recently where we've seen that, and I do think that that lends itself to certain maps more than others. And we'll definitely see, like, for instance, we talk about Bob's team, but there are others, you know, that maybe are more or less stacked towards being a frag-heavy team. Um, not, you hate to say specifically a mid-heavy team, um, but you look at it because you look at a map like Vault City, say, where a lot. I think it's an interesting map because a lot of the fights, a lot of the critical, critical fights happen in mid. But you wouldn't necessarily call it a frag-heavy map that's dominated by, you know, whichever team can play Team Deathmatch the most, because we've seen teams, like you said the other day, who have a lot of negative nets, but are good at coordination and communication and keeping track of flag carriers, and who can uh, work that positioning angle to win maps, even though they're getting killed, you know, more often than they're killing. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of that's just going to come down to communication and, and you know, maybe personalities kind of uh, kind of meshing and, and uh, just kind of understanding how maybe one defense is going to play uh, versus the other one and, and things like that. You know, uh, any team that has players who have played together on previous teams is, is going to benefit from the situation that we're in right now, and that's kind of a, a rush to become a cohesive unit before week one. All right, Fish, before we let you go, uh, I do, do want to ask you, out of all the, the non- the non-standard maps, we'll say. Do you, you got any any inklings towards you know any any crazy ones you might decide to pull out of the box? I've always loved November. Um, I hate bulwark. Uh, <laughs> November November could be a surprise um, from from my team. I think that with uh, a team like mine that is uh, very versatile and has the ability to you know play most people on D or most people on offense. If we were going to pick a map that we could do the uh, the, the wave push, uh, as you were kind of uh, alluding to earlier, where if the two offense die, the two defense go, uh, I think November would be that map. All right, well, uh, if I end up casting that one, I'll be sure to grab two glasses of water ahead of time, bring my Gatorade there. <laughs> Sounds good. For sure. All right, thanks for joining us, Faye. So we're going to move on here. All right, thanks for having me, guys. See you later, man. All right, Facial there with a much more in-depth breakdown of the teams and maps than I was even expecting there. Uh, some good stuff there, though. Yeah, for sure. He, he's been around for so long, just knows the community really well, so that was some good insight. All right, well, let's uh, move on here to another another little bit of preliminary stuff. The kind of thing we really need to go over here is uh, any, any players like, that you have left to watch on the free agent pool? I mean, we saw people who were... Not drafted. We saw some people already had one dropped into the free agent pool. He was actually one of my sleeper picks. Um, I mean, I know for me, I, I'm seeing Hector pugging tonight again. I know one of the issues, I think, honestly, I think one of the reasons he wasn't drafted was because he hadn't shown up in, for, say, a, a week or so before the draft. I think we saw a lot of captains sort of spooked away uh, by lack of activity, especially by, um, you know, European players who were they're not really sure what their schedule was going to be. I mean, we saw Sonic, we saw Sta both go in the last two rounds, both actually the officials team. We saw Hector get left out altogether. Um, this main UA guy actually never showed up at all. So, you know, that's a big risk with European players. But, I mean, personally, I think that's that's the one that I'm I'm, I'm thinking may be one of the most likely to get picked up. Xenos uh, is up there. And I think Xenos and Hector are my two to keep an eye on. Yeah, I agree with Xenos. Uh, he's been playing some. Definitely uh, can play well. Uh, Especially if uh, there's teams with people that haven't even shown up yet that they haven't even talked to, this is a, this is the time to be picking these people up uh, so that you don't just have kind of a you know a dead player on your team for the remainder of the season. But uh, definitely Xenos, uh, you know, the feels is that is that how you pronounce it? Feels? That's how I've been saying it. I asked him and he never told me. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep. I'm, I'll probably just pronounce it differently every day until he tells me not to. <laughs> that works. I'll call him Fields right now. I uh, I actually haven't seen him on the TAM uh, public servers, uh, Team Arena Master, but I I play nightly, and uh, <clears throat> they have those, that new stat system, and he puts up uh, really really good numbers. So I mean, he has, must be a good bragger. So yeah, no, I, I've I personally played there. with him in the past, and I know he's a good TAM player. So he can definitely you know he can definitely shoot shoot weapons. Yeah, so I mean, if he were to come around and be active and you know learn the maps and 
maybe kind of uh, make a transition quick. I mean, you'd have to make it quick, but into uh, CK, uh, Catch the Flag, then I think he could be really good. Um, especially, like I said, if you have somebody you haven't talked to on your team, no reason not to pick him up and talk to him. Uh, other people, I would say uh, Rick James, I believe, UT99 player. I've seen him pug a couple of times in 2K4. He can uh, he can shoot internet guns. Um, the problem there is, I think, maybe people, from what I've seen in pugs, he won't necessarily stay in position, um, and he just doesn't know the 2K4 maps uh, very well at all. Uh, like you said, Hector, uh, he's been he's even pugging, pugging tonight. Like you said, uh, I think he's pretty good personally. I I'm assuming also that he didn't get picked up because he hasn't been around really. Uh, I heard some people talk about Nightjade, but I haven't seen them around at all. Uh, I think they played back in the day, and I'm pretty sure they know Capture the Flag. Uh, once again, if they were to show up and play some pickup games, who knows what could happen there. And my last one I'm going to talk about is going to be Keo, who uh, I think had made a transition into Capture the Flag uh, a couple months ago. I once again think he didn't get picked up because he just has simply hasn't been around. But uh, he can shoot internet guns, and uh, when I played with him in, in pickup games, uh, probably about two months ago, he seemed to play all right anyway. I mean, for a steal at $132, uh, not that those salaries matter anymore at all, but uh, I think if he were to come back and be active, he could uh, help make a team deep. Yeah, and I mean, that's one of the benefits, really, of, of the lack of a salary cap system, or of a hard salary cap, rather. It helps keep the draft balanced in the draft day. Um, however, it also it also means that a lot of these lower lower salary or lesser known players, they don't necessarily there's no real incentive to pick them up and take a risk on draft night because you don't want to give up a potential good player even if they don't show up. You figure you're going to use these guys as a backup list, and I think that in the next couple weeks, as we start seeing these teams say, okay, look, realistically, you know, this guy hasn't shown up or he's shown up one or two nights in, in two or three weeks, we really do need to replace him. I think that's when these guys are going to start getting picked up soon, because um, you see most of these free agents, most of them are on the bottom of the salary list. Some of that's due to uh, you know being unknown. Some of it's due to question marks about their about their availability. But I think we'll get a much better idea, especially in the next coming week or so, as we see teams starting to reevaluate their lineups and, and seeing which of these guys shows up and plays any pickup games can actually show that hey, look, I'm around. You know what I mean? Exactly. I think I think we'll see within the first two weeks of the season. I think we'll see a lot of that where one of your teammates doesn't show. You have to. You mean you must pick somebody up. But that also just goes to show, you know, those free agents. Um, they really. I mean, if you want to play, just play in some pickup games. If you are active, you will probably play in a match this season. I mean, in my honest opinion. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we, this is definitely a marathon and not a sprint. These teams trying to field five every week. Uh, you know, I think we actually print up a pretty active player list in here, but you never know. Four weeks down the line, a lot of things can happen, and, and I think some of these teams are going to be coming down to the final hour and saying, okay, we're either looking at a forfeit or dropping someone and picking up a free agent, and if you're that free agent that's around that night, you've got a chance, and if you play well, you know, if you are got the right attitude and mesh well with your team, no one's going to drop you right back into the free agent list, you know what I mean? They'd rather have an active player than an inactive player. Exactly, and I'm, I'm sure we're going to see that there's several volatile, uh, you know, attitudes in the community, so I fully expect to see, uh, you know, a, a big ego lose one or two games and not show up again. I yeah, either, either disappear happen. or get in, you know, get have some infighting within teams, and uh, I mean, that is, you know, that is another aspect of this, of this, this system that we have in here is that you don't necessarily, you're not necessarily going to see a lot of trades, I think, if people don't mesh with their teams, if they have issues with their captain or whatever. I think captains are going to be more likely to not, not have to wait and try to argue for that. They're just going to drop players and pick up free agents. And I think that's what we're okay, going to see a little more likely than, than, than seeing trades uh, without a hard salary cap. Alright, well we actually, I'm, I'm, I'm actually literally texting DC right now about these new UT comp add-ons. Um, so I'm going to wait and let him get a little, a little bit more info back to me. Uh, right now I'm going to have a little bit of fun with this. This is actually part of a WhatsApp conversation we had earlier today. As, uh, you know, we're a little bored, a little groggy at about, you know, 6.30 in the morning, still still using the uh, the spatula dipped in warm water to, to scrape the nuts frozen to our legs off and try to get this frost done, for frost, you know, off us, try to get some work done this morning. Came across an interesting idea. I was thinking about some of the teams because every team in the MOUT, they, the, the captain gets to choose a name for them. Uh, right about now, we have most teams now have have a name, and we'll worry about that. You know, once they all get named, we'll probably do it next week. But we have a couple that still don't have teams, team names. Bob and Fro have not yet named their teams, 
And so I was thinking to myself, you know, what what could we do? What what suggestions? Maybe we'll help them out. Maybe we're, we'll offer them some team name suggestions. And so I came up with a list of ten potential names for your MLUT team. Very nice. Let's hear them. All right. So I decided you can't just give them ten random teams. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with a theme here. The theme is going to be. Uh, classic, or at the very at the very least, well-known movies throughout history. Not necessarily. This isn't going to be your top ten on IMDb, but you're going to recognize some of these. All right, <clears throat> in no particular order, based on, on on quality or alphabetical or otherwise. All right, number one, Schindler's Piston. Play on Schindler's list. You see what I mean? Very nice. Yes. Then you've got one that, as a notorious player, I feel is very very uh, appropriate for me to be presenting. The November Ending Story. <laughs> and if, if Facial does decide to pick November this, this year, we may very well see this live up to its name. <clears throat> We've actually seen this next one uh, come into play a couple of times in Pugs. As a matter of fact, you can check my bookmarks list here on Twitch to see a couple examples of this. Invasion of the Body Blockers. <laughs> right? Invasion of the Body Snatchers, classic. For anyone who does, it may might be too young for this. I know it's a little bit beyond some of our kids' kids' ears here. I got it. <laughs> and now we're moving on to one. This this is the one that was that was. This is the one that made me want to get dreadlocks growing up. Okay. Bio rifle dome. <laughs> Come on, Polly Shore, the weasel. Anybody? I'm not sure that I understand the reference, but. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to move on to number five on my list. This one, this one's a, it was a little less clever, I think, than the others, but I'm okay with it because it seems appropriate. Uh, I think I had Maul in the mind when I picked this one. We go with Spamtasia. Getting a little artsy here, a little artsy. Um, <laughs> I've actually got a long story about the original inf inspiration for my next name here, but I'll tell that one at another time. Number six on the list: Monster Kills Ball. Obviously, a play on Monsters Ball, Billy Bob Thornton, yeah. and, and the movie that ruined Halle Berry for me. But that's that's a whole other. Right. We'll do a whole show on that some other time in my traumatic experience. Um, going back here, if you ever if you ever had to read these books in in school, this may bring you back a little bit. The Shock Tapes of Wrath. I was going to call it the Grapes of Wrath or the Tapes of Wrath. You know, obviously playing the Grapes of Wrath, but you know, Shock Tape. You know, the average person. I just wanted to be appeal to the mainstream a little more here. Yeah. The Shock Tapes of Wrath. Um, coming down number seven on this, excuse me, number eight, right? Yes, number eight on this list. I, I went back and forth in this one. And this is what I decided to go with. A pub star named Desire. We're going way back on that one. I, I'm not sure, I'm not sure how many people are going to quite get that reference, but there you go. That's good. That's street car, good. street car named Desire, a pub star named Desire. I wish I knew a pub star whose name rhymed with Desire. I'm sure someone's gonna give me one at some point, and we can we can fill that in. I can like edit this somehow. It will just we'll make it happen. And this was my last. This was actually my last edition. Not not number ten on my list, but my last my last edition. I'm kind of proud of this one. The Maltese Flat Cannon. Yeah, I like that one. We're going we're going way back, and now we're getting into this classics. And to finish this one off, I had had to throw one in here. Had to use the link gun. Had to use the link chain. And now we're singing in the link chain. Yeah. Boom. Well, you also... I thought you had another one that was, like, gone with the piston. And I yeah. That was well, I already had I Schindler's thought, Piston. Right. I just thought it would be a good one for Lino's team, because uh, if Cashel <laughs> does play, that, that Cashel and Linoleum uh, piston offense is going to be interesting. So. Alright, we'll go honorable mention, gone with the piston. And then, well, I was just going to add mine just for Fro's team, because we all know that uh, Nine Inches of Afro likes to drop back like it's hot. And he plays offense mostly, but uh, I was going to just everybody calls him the Fro backer, so <laughs> think of it from the Fro backers. And then my ideas for Bob team was uh, uh, they all make their names when they're, they've been scrimmaging. Uh, big something, like Bob for Big B, Big B, and then Vengeance Big B. Uh, Lavac was doing Big L, so I was thinking if there was a good... Uh, Acronym for BIG, but I couldn't pick up. Uh, I couldn't think of a good one. We'll, we'll work on it. Yeah. We'll work on it. I like Big L, by the way. A little bit of a, a little bit of a New York reference there. Yeah. 
Oh, you got, uh, you know, Fro can wear their Froback jerseys, and he can throw up the big L's. Nice. <laughs> All right, let me let me see let me see what details I've gotten here from from Mr. Daniel over here. All right, it sounds like um, the the big the big important update from uh, from DC here. Um, he's going to the bar right away from work. Uh, so so there's the newest <laughs> the newest update on that. Actually, he says he's going to have more information ready on Sunday. I think he's waiting. He's talking to Ono. So for those who don't know. Uh, ono, who worked on UT 2004, worked at Digital Extremes, um, played TDM actually with my team, Death Threats, for a little while, uh, from No Escape, etc., etc. Uh, he came back for the draft, joined us, played some pugs, and apparently him and DC have been throwing around this idea of working on a newer version of UT Comp. Um, Neo, I think you've read that thread. You, you, what kind of additions are they thinking of? Uh, you know, I've skimmed it very, uh, very briefly, to be honest with you. Yeah, I mean, the. the the basics that I've seen was just basically that they're throwing around ideas. Like I know that they're they've mentioned the smart TTF mod that we had earlier in 2K4 that they've talked about doing sort of an improved version of that and rolling it in. Um, you basically, I think right now they're taking open suggestions. There's a pro and real thread. I know DC is also getting input directly from a few a few other people. But the key the the key aspect of it here is that he has the UT comp source code and he's he's going to put it up and, and create a GitHub for it, which means that other people can clone it and create their own versions. Or you know, basically, basically he's going to crowdsource it, uh, not crowdfund like some people on Pro U seem to have gotten confused about. He's not looking for money here. What they're looking to do is basically collaborate and allow open collaboration on this, so that people can submit their own sort of code or script or whatever changes to try to implement new features and get some stuff uh, fixed and added, uh, etc. Um, I know I know that they've thrown around the idea of you know improved scoreboards, things like tracking the keg instead of setting it to health. There's a lot of little ideas that everyone's kind of been been saying over the years. Man, I wish we could do this. I wish we could do that. And and it looks like right now that they're sort of getting in position to do that. Uh, DC told me he, do, he doesn't want to promise anything, you know, until he knows exactly you know what his time frame is going to be on that and what what, what exactly the details are going to be. So we're going to bring him on. We're going to probably save that maybe for next week. We'll have a better idea of what's going on with that. Uh, but he definitely told me. Uh, He'll have more info probably by Sunday, and we're definitely going to see what happens with that. It could be very interesting because I know I know certainly everyone has at least a, at least a short little wish list of you know stocking stuffers they'd like to see added to their to their UT comp. Uh, I don't know abilities basically. Yeah. Well, that could be really interesting. I, I like the idea for the keg uh, vials would be interesting as well because. Uh, you know, I don't. I think that uh, vials in this game is completely underrated uh, at this point in time. But yeah, I mean, it'd be really cool. Yeah, I mean, we've even we've even gotten into some conversations about the really in-depth stuff. I mean, there's been uh, WhatsApp conversations about you know whether to in, whether to include things like cover kills and seals and how to define them and whether we need to edit maps and how you know there's some very in-depth conversations already going on, which is good to see because. In the past, it's kind of all been hypothetical, like, hey, it would be cool if this happened. It'd be cool if we could do this. But now it looks like we've kind of got some people who are willing to, uh, at the very least, facilitate it. And, and I think that would be nice. Um, if nothing else, I mean, surely we can get a couple, uh, a couple of these little nagging issues or lack of lack of features uh, patched up soon. Um, what I don't know is whether we're going to have anything substantial done by the end of this uh, MLUT season, or whether we're going to just keep with the stable version that we have now and just keep another test branch that we'll probably try on servers and keep that maybe for, for pickup games and stuff along those lines until we get it um, in, in a situation that we like but of course that's all well down the line but definitely a, a big piece of news that we'll be following here yeah that'll be really nice uh, it's, and one thing that you can actually look at in game but uh, it's just not on the same page where there's because if you do the F1 you can see all the people how many times they shot what and all that good stuff but what would be nice to have kind of in the same general vicinity would be uh, carriers, how many times they're uh, touching the flag, for captains anyway, in my opinion, and then uh, defense, how many times they're returning the flag would be interesting because uh, you, you get to know the people that are never grabbing the flag when they're playing a, three off, a true three offense and stuff like that would be nice to know. Yeah, we've definitely, we've definitely talked about a lot of that things, even even as, in as in-depth as things like uh, like amount of time that the flag has been carried by a given person. And I know one thing I've been lobbying for is better team stats. So things like uh, conversion, for instance. So like UT2K4, you know the denial, the denied uh, sound effect that comes yeah. up. Uh, I, from what I'm told, that's based purely on proximity. And that's why if you're outside the base on Mall, you can still get a denial. And so... Oh, yeah. And so there's certain things like... like, like 
tracking conversion rate that I would like to where if you get it we get within that proximity with the enemy flag you know whether or not you turn that into a cap um, you either convert it or you don't convert it and that would be interesting for me because you, you start to see things like which teams are winning their flag standoffs and which teams are losing yeah. it because I know we've had some pickup games where you sort of track in your head and you say okay this team this team won you know five to one and you look back and you go, well, wait, man, four of those caps came off standoffs, and that was really the key to the game. It wasn't just that their offense dominated, it's that their defense was able to get the returns quicker. And, and stuff like that really comes out whenever you have more detailed statistics to look at and sort of guide you along. So it'll be interesting to see what, what can come from that. Yeah, and with information like that, it would be nice. Uh, the nice thing would be to be able to talk to the team afterwards and have them kind of share input on did they go three return or did they keep uh, you know two cover on their uh, flag carrier to see what maybe is the best way to run. I'm sure it would be team to team basis anyway, but uh, that'd be interesting. Yeah, and it definitely it would definitely be a good tool for captains as well, trying to to work with their chemistry and try to guide which players work well together and it, you know maybe not so much in an MLUT context but certainly for for bringing up some of these newer guys I know we've had some we even still have some TAM players that show up from time to time in TTF you know sort of being able to coach them up a little bit is a lot easier when you have in-depth um, what's the word I'm looking for basically in-depth statistics analytics is the word I'm looking for when you get those analytics you can really break things down a little bit more and and you can also give people goals to shoot for, you know, like if you've got a flag carry that you want to work on, on really keeping the flag in their hands, you can you can track it based on time. Or if you've got a defender that you want, um, you know, keeping the keep it back on the flag rather than pushing up, you, know, you can track how many times, you know, whatever. There's all kinds of statistics you can get into, and, and you know, it'd be nice to see if we get a lot more of those to uh, to work with in the future. All right, well, it looks like there's no MLU team matches happening tonight. There was a little bit of of a rumor that we might see one early tonight just based on scheduling doesn't look like that's gonna happen uh, so the matches officially are gonna start tomorrow night and it's gonna be tomorrow through or actually it's, it's officially this Sunday officially it's this Sunday through next Saturday is the week within which our captains have to schedule their matches so basically they just need to be done by next Sunday night that way they can be prepared to play their next round of matches and uh, so, you know, I'll try to keep up with these captains. We'll try to find out when everybody's playing and see what coverage we can get for you. Um, Neo, uh, you know, we'll yeah. be trying to bring you on as much as possible. You and you and Facial have both been on both draft night and tonight. Um, you know, I'm open to see. You know, we're gonna we're gonna sort of see who's available to cast what. Obviously, you're not gonna be able to cast your own matches, but uh, we'll keep yeah, in touch I'll with everyone. Be down for, uh, for as many as I, you know, that I'm not playing in. Well, we'll definitely be down to see what we can do here. Um, all right, we've just about hit our hour, and that's about where we're shooting for here. So, uh, you know, we're going to head and cut out here and see if any, any pickup games happen and see if maybe we can get one casted, too. Or at least uh, I will see if I will. Um, but uh, Yeah, I think, I think there's one going on uh, right now. Um, I don't know if you wanted to close it out and start one or what, whatever, uh, whatever you're up for. Yeah, actually, the sound effects in the background have been the music from the game and the sound effects from the pugs that have been playing in the background. I figured they'd be a little more relevant than just playing raw music, so... That's what you've been hearing. It's been kind of low, but it's been back there. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and cut this now so we can go ahead and, and get this get this preview up self-contained and grab me a little break in a shower, and then we'll see what happens. All right, sounds good. Thanks for having me, man. Yep, thanks for being on here, and thanks for listening, y'all.